I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've gotten behind on my horror movie marathon watching. Basically, I got the whole thing going last week and Thursday night. I was pretty up to date and couldn't get through all of Night of the Living Dead in one night. And moving on to Friday, I decided just to watch Night of the Hunter instead. And then with the whole trip down to Orlando and everything, I ended up having to finish both of those movies on Sunday. So now it's Monday, and I'm watching my Sunday movie, which was Troll Hunter. I've never seen this one. I know it's like a Finnish movie. I've been curious to see, or Norwegian, I guess, Norwegian. Um, I've been curious to see what it's about. I heard good things about it. So I'm going to cram this one in. Maybe I can cram Dog Soldiers in later tonight, like I'm supposed to watch tonight. No, oh, it's funny. I'm enjoying this marathon, but there's always that point in the month where it becomes a little harder to keep at it. Dude, he's going to punch in the elbow. So, Troll Hunter was interesting. Um, I don't know how to rank it. It was the second found footage movie I had this month, and the third subtitled movie I had this month. And I gotta say, that makes things a little difficult. Um, with the shaky cam and moving everywhere and kind of not being focused and then having to read subtitles on top of it. Uh, to me, it's a little disorienting. Uh, maybe that's just a personal issue. But it was alright. It wasn't really much of a horror movie, I would say. It was more kind of, I don't know, sci-fi. It kind of reminded me of like a made-for-sci-fi movie. Um, the CGI was a little lacking. The practicals were a little goofy and... The practicals in the CGI did not match up at all. I feel like there's a lot of references to troll mythology that maybe if you grew up in Scandinavia, you might be a little more familiar with. I know a lot of, you know, just fairy tales and myths around there kind of centralize on that. Of You know, the whole myths of Norse descent, because trolls are a big part of Norse mythology and all that stuff. I know it's kind of filtered down into fairy tales and whatnot, as opposed to, you know, living in America and having more of a Christian-style um, fairy tale upbringing for most people around here. So it's kind of a different idea. There's some things in there I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess that must be a commonly believed thing about trolls. I didn't know that. Okay, whatever. Um, but overall, it was good. I mean, if you have nothing better to do, it's worth a watch. It's not a horrible movie by any means. It's just not really all that great. Something I read online is that they're looking to make an American remake of this. And like I said, with the troll mythology, I just don't see that happening. And uh, Norway, it's always kind of stereotypical that there are trolls. I remember Disney and Epcot, they had a Norway ride where you're in like a Viking ship and you run into trolls and stuff. Um, if you're gonna make an American remake, I think you'd have to still do it in Norway, like, have them go to Norway, because I just can't see them trying to say there's trolls in America, that just seems kind of weird, you kind of need that old world feeling to it to make it work. Um, I'm not encouraging them to make a remake of this, I think that would be a really bad idea, but... If they did, I would hope they wouldn't just be like, Oh yeah, look, we were here in Southern California, and what the heck is that? It's a troll. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Another Monster Monday, and today, I'm going to be watching Dog Soldiers. So let's pop this thing open. Recently picked this up at a, uh, whatchamacallit, a movie stop. 
for about like three bucks. So it was kind of a score. I'm gonna pop that in. I finally got my PlayStation 3 back and running. So let's watch some British werewolves. I know I said I got this movie cheap, but how is this for a cheap freaking menu screen? It's got a logo and play movie. No scene selection, no behind the scenes, no nothing. Play movie, that's my only option. Makes you wonder why they actually gave me a menu screen. It's kind of a waste. Those things out there are real. And you're afraid of it. This is no ordinary enemy. I don't scare that easy. You may never get another night's sleep as long as you live. Dog Soldiers is a movie I normally really enjoy. I gotta admit, I wasn't paying the closest attention. I was kind of doing some more Halloween decorating while this was on. But, it's a fun movie. It's, oh, there's not enough good werewolf movies, so I feel like I gotta take what I could get. Um, as a kid, I was always more interested in werewolves than any of the other kind of stereotypical old school monsters. Yeah, more so than mummies and vampires and all that kind of stuff. But there really aren't that many great movies. I mean, coming to think of it, you got The Original Wolfman is a good movie. Yeah, this, American Werewolf of London, of course, is high up there. The Howling, um, Ginger Snaps, I you know that's kind of debatable. Um, I had a couple more that I can't really think of on the top of my head. But werewolves really don't get as many cool movies as vampires do or anything like that. And um, it's always good to find one that's worth watching. So this is always a fun one to throw in the DVD player time and time again. For Paranormal Tuesday, I'm going to go check out a 1970s classic, The Omen. I've never seen the original, as sad as that is. I've seen the remake, but I have never seen the original. So very interested to see what the origin of the whole thing was. And sadly, uh, South Park has completely tainted my ability to watch this already, because I hear this chanting, and all I can think of is the uh, South Park version that they do this whole chanting thing and I think it vaguely translates or is like pig latin for ass master so yeah that's all I could hear listening to this sends the beast with wrath because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is 666. So I totally cannot see the ending of The Omen without thinking of... Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast, one of my favorite songs ever. 
and I haven't watched this video in a long time, and I just realized the beginning of the video is freaking uh, Return of the Vampire, and I'm seeing a lot of other movies I've never really been able to pick up the reference to previously, so kind of just funny to see this video again. Uh, already having more fun watching Iron Maiden than I was watching The Omen. I feel bad, but I was bored. I was so totally bored. And I said I'd seen the remake, and I saw it a while ago. I haven't gone back to it since. I've watched it, I think, just the one time. And I just don't know. It. I re knew exactly what was going to happen at all points of the movie. I wasn't really surprised by anything. Oh, Godzilla flash there for a second. I have to bring that up. Oh, uh, there he is again. Yay, hey, Godzilla. Alright, but anyway, so... I don't know. It just... I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. I'm just a little bummed about that. Um, it's... I saw a comment on Netflix before I started watching it. This is part of the devil trifecta with Exorcist and Rosemary's Babies. And I felt both of those movies were a lot stronger than The Omen was. I don't know. I just, maybe it just was the fact that I was never scared and I kind of knew what was going on the whole time and everything was just like very cut and dry, kind of what was going on to me. I knew the twist about the mother and all that stuff, so I don't know. It's kind of sad. I wish I liked it more than I did. So I'm going to keep finishing watching Iron Maiden and uh, stop recording their video so I don't get copyright infringement on this video any more than I probably already will. So it didn't really go as expected on Universal Wednesday today. I'm kind of bummed. I ended up having to work and didn't have the opportunity to go and see Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. A little bummed about that. I'd requested a day off and I didn't get it. And I mean, there's some other stuff I was going to do as well, but I was looking forward to being able to go see that at night. That would have been really cool. But after I got off work, um, since I'd missed the thing I wanted to see, uh, Whitney and a friend were going to go see Paranormal Activity 4, so I went with them. And uh, that's why I'm recording this on my webcam. Just a stupid tribute to that movie's stupid gimmick. If you liked the other ones, this might be worthwhile. If you were iffy on a lot of the other ones like I was, this one was freaking awful. It was horrible. It was so bad. It really was. It, I, I hated it. I had a bunch of jump scares that were only scary because they were loud noises and sudden movement and there was no real scary factor to it. It was just, ah, you know, there's nothing there. It's just lame and cheap and nothing. And a lot of it didn't make sense. I mean, I don't own an Xbox and if you've seen the trailers, there's a big thing with the Kinect. Do you leave that on all the time? I just, I can't imagine that. You leave that on all the time. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And uh, Whitney was asking this morning, it's like, I know there probably are cameras that switch from night vision to normal vision, uh, depending on the lighting in the room. But I would assume those are probably pretty damn expensive and not something you'd have in your average household. Not something you'd need in your average household. It seems like specialized equipment to me. And also, does nobody shut their damn computer lids? Uh, the, one of the big gimmicks in the movie, instead of, if you've seen the other ones just before, they use security systems in the house. I think the first one was just the one guy with the handheld camera. That made sense to me. Handheld camera during the day, put it up on a tripod at night. That made sense. Uh, second one, home security system. Okay, that, that works. That's, I'll let you do that one. The third one with like the 1980s or whatever, was it even the 80s? It might have been earlier than that. Technology putting like the thing on top of an oscillating fan and having to change out just hundreds and hundreds of VHS tapes. That's kind of ridiculous to me. I really, yeah, that, that is ridiculous. Um, and then this one, it, the gimmick was they had the one magical camera with the night vision in the living room. Um, so I could record the dots set up by the Kinect. 
and then all the laptops in the house which have the built-in camera just like this one that I'm recording into right now were set to be on all the time and recording all the time I just that just seems odd uh, when I'm not using my computer the lid is shut I shut the lid um, I've always pretty much done that. Uh, it seems like a safety issue to me just to leave it open. It's uh, unnecessary light, especially at night when you have this shiny computer screen. Um, also, I mean, these were all Macs, I think. There's probably a sponsorship in there, I'm sure. Along with Microsoft. Well, it's ironic. Microsoft and all the computers are Macs. Um, That's kind of weird. But anyway, um, they had the, you know, the little... Uh, yeah, the cameras. My computer, my uh, Dell, has a little light next to the camera. When the camera's on, right now, there's a little light shining on the top of my computer telling me my camera's recording. Um, assuming that probably could be bypassed through programming, but the people in this movie didn't really seem to be hackers, programmers, anything like that. So I don't really understand how they would have really known to do that or how to do that or whatever it just seems kind of ridiculous that nobody would have noticed they were being recorded and I was constantly waiting throughout the course of the movie for somebody to be like hey why is this recording or I was like a creepy little kid in there who also makes no damn sense in the sense of the movie uh, I was expecting him to be staring at the computer and know that it was recording and um, like leave a message or something that would have been kind of creepy I think uh, they don't touch that. They don't even go there. And there's a lot of places they don't go. And it is retread after retread after retread. No questions are answered. Uh, the questions raised, I don't really give a crap about. Um, the problem with these Paranormal Activity movies is for some reason, I see them every year as they come out. And then the next year, I'm just like, oh, well, that was awful. The last one, you know, about like six months later, I'm just, oh, yeah, that was awful. I, I wouldn't go back to that. And then for some reason, come October, I'm just like, yeah, I want to see the new one. I want to see what they do from here. And I, don't, I guess I'm just a sucker for it. It's kind of annoying that I just keep going back and back to these movies that are just, just, just subpar. <laughs> if nothing else, they are just subpar. And I really wish I would have had the opportunity to go see Frankenstein in theaters. But maybe next year. Yeah, but... After getting back, I threw this in the DVD player. It's still a classic movie. It's one of my all-time favorites. Um, so I did get to watch it, the original. It's funny, I don't go back to the original nearly as much as I used to. I used to go watch the original pretty regularly. But when I really kind of started watching the sequels, uh, particularly Bride is an amazing sequel. I think it's one of the few sequels that surpasses the original. Um, the acting quality, the storyline, everything in it, I think, is much more enjoyable than the original movie. The original movie is a must-see. It's iconic, it's classic, all that good stuff. But um, if you've watched it, go check out Bride. Bride is amazing, completely awesome movie. And then I've talked about it, I think, a bunch of times in these videos. Um, I think I've cut some of it, so I don't remember what actually made it out onto the internet. But Son of Frankenstein is very good. Um, I don't know if I like it more than the original. I definitely don't like it as much as Bride, but Son of Frankenstein is very cool. Um, I love Bela Lugosi in it. It's the last outing as Karloff as the monster. It's definitely one of those underrated movies that I champion as much as possible. I'm about to pop in the remake of Dawn of the Dead for today's Romero Thursday movie choice. But I gotta say, I know I didn't have to buy these movies this way, Land of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead all together in one little box set like this, but it drives me up the wall. Um, because when I go to go put it in my collection, let's see, I've got Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Next in line should go Land of the Dead, then Diary of the Dead, and God forbid if I ever bought Survival. And then here's Night of the Living Dead, the remake, and this is where Dawn of the Dead should go. So, I can't put these in order. I put it in order with Land of the Dead. I just keep the Romero series intact, I guess. Mostly because I just bought Night of the Living Dead remake recently. But, I don't know. My OCD DVD collector self has a hard time with this DVD set. Though it is a nice set. I do love both of these movies.
officials have declared a state of emergency. Everybody they kill gets up and kills. Residents are advised to find a safe place and stay there. I've just been informed that we are going off the air and switching to the emergency broadcasting system. <laughs> the end of the remake of Dawn of the Dead. A better found footage film than all of Diary of the Dead. Still love this remake. I know I kind of talked about it a lot earlier, but uh, yeah, oh, it's fun to watch this movie. I never regret it. I don't know how I really feel about fast zombies, but I totally give this movie a pass for it. I'm not gonna judge them for it. Another Universal movie, this time on a Friday. We're gonna watch Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff together in The Black Cat. Kind of excited to check this one out. It's been one I've wanted to watch for a long time. Did you ever see an animal skin, Yarmar? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do to you now. Fair the skin from your body. Slowly. Bit by bit. Um, yeah, so, as it's getting so close to Halloween, I have so much stuff to finish up for our party, and I just couldn't spend, or pay as much attention to this movie as I would have liked. I ended up kind of doing other things while it was on, and I really don't feel like I got the full effect of the movie. I don't feel like I got to enjoy it the way I wanted to. So this is going to be one I'm going to have to rewatch eventually, because I really don't even know how I feel about it. Today's movie is Twilight Zone. It's funny because I picked to do this one before, like, the cheapo DVDs came out in stores and everything. And this one was actually a cheapo one at Walmart, but I decided I was going to do it beforehand. It just worked out really well, so I like the TV series. I'm interested to see how this goes. the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone movie was alright. I don't know if it's my favorite. I don't even know if I'll keep it in my collection. It was just fine. But it did kind of leave into a nice day. Um, as I mentioned before, we have a lot of stuff to get done for the Halloween party. And it kind of led into a nice little movie marathon. We watched that. We watched Shaun of the Dead. I think we watched Adam's Family. I want to say there was something else we watched in that list, but we just kind of threw on some horror movies and worked on Halloween stuff and kind of relaxed as much as you can when you're running around doing stuff for a Halloween party. <laughs> 